Hello, everyone. I guess you can hear me, right? We will just wait for a few more minutes so that everyone can join, okay? We are expecting more participants. I guess you, everyone can hear me and everyone can uh, like see me. So just confirm me that uh, my voice is audible to you on the chat section. It will be really great if you acknowledge this. I haven't seen any answer, yes. Just so just write down yes, okay. Okay, Ryan, uh, thank you so much. Okay, Mahesh. So see guys, uh, let me just, you know, tell you few uh, things about this uh, Guru class, okay? So we have enabled three, three, three things for you, okay? One is the chat section, one is the Q&A, and one is the hand raise option, okay? So whenever uh, the mentor or me uh, gonna ask you to acknowledge like yes, no, any doubts, anything. So then just write down on the chat section if you want to say anything and all. If you are facing any type of question, okay, want to ask anything, so just write down that question in the Q&A, okay? And if you like in the end, like we will gonna, you know, uh, give a chance to everyone to ask uh, question so at that time you can just raise your hand so that we the mentor or me gonna you know uh, like listen to you and we're gonna resolve all your doubts whatever it is so meanwhile when we are waiting for a few more participants so just do let's do something okay so just tell me like from which city you belong okay like uh, first of all let me introduce you about myself my name is Manan Parekh and I'm the senior counselor of Unique Aksha Okay, and I uh, belongs to Jaipur, Rajasthan. Okay, so let's hear from everyone, like from which city you belong. Okay, so just use the chat section and tell me like from which city you belong. Okay, Manav is from Gwalior. Okay, Manav. Ganesh is from Gorakhpur. Okay, Bangalore, Mahesh. Okay, Assam. Okay. I guess there are more, few more participants who have to tell me. So it's just a normal, uh, we are talking, right? Uh, so just like this information is not being used. So just tell us like uh, from which city you belong. So what, let's say like, uh, let me ask you like, what, what exactly you do right now? Like, are you a student or a working professional? Okay, Bharat, you are from Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so Fazul Haq, you are doing B-Tech. Okay. Student, Ganesh, okay, you are a student. So is there any working professional among us? Like who is right now working in some organization? Or let, let's say, uh, is there any fresher? Like, like who have completed their graduation, completed their co college? Okay, Pala, Mahesh, you are working. So is there any fresher also? Okay, Bharat, you are still in third year. That's perfect. We will just wait for a few more minutes so that, you know, everyone can join. Then we can start our session. Okay, Manav, you are in the final year of your college. Okay, so Manav, exactly what you're doing? Like, you are from, a, you are from computer science background or something else? Okay, come with a science background. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So, uh, 
I think we should start our session. Okay. So just give me a minute. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me introduce first of all everyone about Uni Kaksha exactly. Okay. Like in the platform you are right now, it's Uni Kaksha. Okay. And it's an online education platform. So we are an online upskilling platform. Okay. That helps students and working prof professional upskill themselves in their tech career with the help of our top mentors. Okay. And in industry relevant curriculum. So far, we had a, a you know positive impact in the careers of 10,000 plus students. And today with the guru class, we hope this help you same manner. So I guess everyone knows, uh, you know, today's topic, like in what exactly the guru class is on. Again, let me tell you. So like, did you know like that MongoDB is the leading uh, NoSQL database? So powering someone of the most innovative web application and platform. So in fact, MongoDB popularity has skyrocketed in recent years, making it must known school skill for any uh, aspiring web developer okay so in this webinar we will learn how to master mongodb operations with compass atlas and node.js so are you are you excited so let me know in the comments so whoever is excited just write down yes on the comments so we will also share the certificate of this guru class with all the attendees okay so everyone who is attended right now will going to receive a certificate okay so we would like everyone to share it on linkedin by tagging unique aksha by using hashtags like hashtag unique aksha hashtag full stack development hashtag coding hashtag learning hashtag monster okay so by sharing your certificate you will demonstrate your commitment to continuous learning and professional growth while also Positioning yourself as a standout candidate in the eyes of potential employers and industrial peers. So I hope everyone will do the same. It's your own benefit, guys. Okay. So today's session is taken by Karan. He is a full stack developer trainer at Unikaksha. Currently, he is training 300 plus students in developing essential skills like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React JS, and MySQL. Helping them to become confident web developer in future, he has three years plus experience in web development and the session he will cover one of the most important topic of web development, which is MongoDB. So pay attention and keep taking notes, everyone. Okay, so let's all uh, welcome Karan. So Karan, yes, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Manan, um, just a minute. I hope you all can see my screen. All right. Uh, so today we are going to see um, what is uh, MongoDB and um, what are the operations that we can perform with Compass, Atlas, and also in Node.js. So on that note, um, let us begin. So the uh, uh, topics that we are going to cover today is, first of all, what are databases? Like before we need to start, we need to learn what are databases, right? So we'll cover uh, what are databases. So how are databases uh, used in a full stack web development uh, application and how how the role of um, you know database is much important and plays uh, the most, uh, you know, uh, uh, most uh, important in like information gathering and also data uh, data storage so we'll look in that aspect as well and also like in terms of dynamic programming how databases allows us to perform dynamic programming uh so that uh will do so the next is uh so on that note 
So let us see uh, what are the different layers. So I hope most of you know by this point, but just to gloss over. So we have a two uh, sections. One is called as a front end, the other is called as a back end. So in the front end, we have presentation layer going to HTML, CSS, or something like React. Whereas a business layer, that would be our business layer and persistence layer. They would be powered by our, uh, you know, um, JavaScript, basically computing. So that's the front end. And in the back end, like uh, the persistence layer also plays a role in the back end as well. So that uh, traditionally powered by PHP can also be done using Node.js, uh, Python, or Java, whereas a database layer consists of our actual database. Now, on that note, so let us discuss what are databases. So a database is typically a structured collection or an, it can be unstructured also, but a, mostly a structured collection of information or data. Okay. So first of all, we need to understand a difference between a data uh, and an information. A data is something that is um, basically collection of um, a raw data, like uh, raw information, like raw information in the sense is something very uh, abstract and coherent. Like your name is a data. Your name in itself doesn't have any meaning, right? With just your name, we cannot identify anything. But tying up your name with an address or a city now creates a relationship between your name and your city. Now using that, we can uh, uh, create a structure of uh, create a structure such as a map. Maybe we can map your home that way, or maybe we can map your you know uh, map your daily commute. So in some way, uh, an information is basically a collection of uh, processed processed data. So a processed data is what we call as an information. So what is a processed data and what is an unprocessed data then? So we have seen that data means collection of something, some uh, some abstract keys. So what is processed and what is unprocessed? So processed means a data with the relations, a data with relation or like say your name and your email ID are related to each other because the email ID belongs to you and you only you can access the email ID. The same with your phone number, the same with your address, right? Or only your address can identify where you live. So if uh, for uh, forever some reason, if you want to access information about your current location, your home or your work, we need an address. So that is an information. Then you are, uh, when you are talking about in a professional sense, when you are talking about your resume, same, your name, mobile number, email ID, everything comes into place and also your address comes into place. But additionally, we'll also have, um, you know, information related to your, information related to your, uh, you know, college. Let's say your college, where did you recently study? Which degree have you studied? So, in in it of itself like um, you know on itself like uh, having a name like such as Anna University or you know or MGR University or something that the university name holds nothing that cannot relate you to that but if we relate that uh, you have studied Bachelor of Engineering or Masters of Engineering at any Anna University now we are uh, deriving a relationship between the data so. That is what databases are for. Databases are uh, used to process data and also store raw information. Okay. So, for example, let us in, uh, assume that we are storing information about, as I said, as a professional information about a person. So, what are the raw data that we might have? So, we might have their name, their email ID, we might have their uh, address, their decent college, their CGPA their grade, whether they have any history of arrears, whether they have any standing arrears, and what is their, you know, expertise, whether they have the expertise in web development or it is in uh, AIML or it is in, it might not even be in uh, computer science field, it might be in some other field. So how many, experience, how many years of experience we have? So these data on themselves, like uh, alone on themselves or isolated themselves, doesn't provide any meaning, but if collected, we can create an application to
to maintain this information and present a uh, uh, a present a page or a present a uh, slide or whatever uh, format you want we can present something using it so for example using the data of uh, using the same data that i have listed up for about 100 people now i can create a job uh, job searching platform okay so in a job searching platform if i collect more than like 50 60 profiles basically a potential candidates and if i present that to potential employers of those candidates now i can derive a relation so this is how applications are being built and that is the role of a database okay database is the most important uh, in terms of uh, functional uh, functional design of a web application specifically a full stack web application needs a database without a database it doesn't provide any meaningful function to the web page now in that case so we have uh, different types of database we have hierarchical databases network databases relational databases and no sql databases for the sake of this uh, you know simplicity of this uh, session we'll just uh, look into the uh, relational databases and also no sql databases now databases themselves cannot manage themselves right so we need to have a some kind of management system so those are called as database ma database management systems okay we have something called as rdbms rdbms means relational database uh, management system okay poster sql and mysql are one of the great examples of relational databases whereas mongodb serves as the main and one of the most very popular and re recently booming uh, no SQL database. So, what is a what is SQL then? Before we learn about No SQL, like which is opposite to SQL, we need to know the original first. So, let us learn the original first, which is structured query language, or called as SQL. Now, SQL, uh, as the name suggests, it's a structured query language, meaning we have a structure to all the data that we store. We cannot store the data on their individual beacons are an individual memory so the data has to have a shared space okay specifically in mysql we call them as databases so each and every database or basically a collection of tables in a mysql contains um, as i said multiple uh, tables that are either related to each other or not related to each other if they are related then the type of database that we are using is called as relational database okay so how does uh, we derive a relation or how does we identify a database or a table in it mysql then so we identify or we um, uniquely have a something called as primary key primary key is basically the uh, primary identifier or the main identifier of a mysql database table so if that is the case then what is a primary key so a primary key is basically a field in a table. So you know a, a table is made up of rows and columns, right? So the rows are called as records, whereas the columns are called as fields. So all the fields will contain your labels. So the fields are also called as labels, such as you know uh, profile ID, profile name, profile email, or name, email address, phone number. So those are called as fields, and in any in every database table or in every sql table will have one field dedicated and solely called as a primary key okay that primary key will uh, will give us the access or will allow us to access the record in a unique format a primary key will be unique meaning that a primary key cannot be duplicated in a database so you might have a profile id or you might have a user id in a uh, database table so in that case so um if you have um you know uh, let's say if you have a if you have like information related to a professional information such as a job portal where you have uh, where you have multiple profiles so each and every profile will be given their unique id okay that unique id right so that unique id will serve as the identifier so we for the uh, simplicity process or like let us assume the name of the profile is current right so there might be multiple currents right there are multiple currents right 
so i cannot identify using the name so can i identify using email yes you can but a, a person can have two profiles they might be uh, you know well versed in multiple branches so they might have a profile related to their web, web development skills they might have a profile related to their aiml skills now those profiles cannot be mixed because both have different achievements different certifications different courses different experience different years of experience their field of work the companies they have worked on so it's completely different the name the person might be the same but for a job seeker or the candidate or the one who is offering the job okay for them both are different profiles they don't want them to be mixed so in that case profile id serves as our loan uh, you know loan identifier now so this is all you need to need to know about ids now by the way this id uh, id structuring and the structuring of all the items related to or relating all the uh, re, re, like data of a record to an id doesn't only stand for sql languages it also stands for no sql languages as well like where you basically have an identifier identifying the entire record now SQL has its own uh, CRUD operations. CRUD operations means create, read, manipulate, and delete. So one of those things are select, uh, which is used to read data from a database table. So we'll use select. If we want to select all the data, we'll use select star from a table name. So like we might, it might be a profile table or something. Then you will have um, create, a table name and then all the uh, record fields that you are going to create so this is how you create read and everything in a sql so basically it's a table tabular language where you are constrained by your tables so then what are the disadvantages of sql then so we have seen the advantages but what are the disadvantages the disadvantages is that some some uh, in some applications or in many applications many applications indeed you will have empty uh, empty values or default values clogging up your database, therefore taking up valuable memory spaces and also computing power. So one user might be very well experienced. So they might have number of ex numerous experience. So you might, they might have company one, company two, company three, company four, but not all uh, persons have four, uh, uh, four previous companies. Basically, the they have work, not all persons work in four different companies and search for a fifth, fifth company, right? They might have worked only in two. So in that case, you are end up holding a temporary uh, data or like a, a basic uh, data up in those uh, empty spaces. A, a field or a record like uh, else would have been empty now filled up with a default value. Now that's taking our memory space as well. If you think about in thousands and thousands of records, that makes sense, right? Like it might seem like one KB, two KB, but if you add up thousands and millions and millions of data, it might be adding up to almost one terabyte at some point. So you don't want to lose one terabyte of your, uh, you know, mem your database storage to something that is not even needed, right? So that is why tabular structure fails and that is why we move on from SQL, uh, basically a structured query language to a no structured query language. So a no SQL basically doesn't have, in a traditional sense, doesn't have a structure, meaning that it is not stored in tables and it is not stored in a single file. You don't have a single file holding all the uh, items. So as I talked about databases, right, in SQL. So in SQL, all the tables of a database are stored in a single file. In turn, all the databases are stored in a single memory location. They are not stored in multiple different locations. Sure, you can take backups and you can schedule backups, but it's still not perfect, right? It's still there can, that data can be corrected if you are storing all the information, all those valuable information about your application that you need for your applications to live in a single position. Or a single memory location. That is where NoSQL comes in. NoSQL works mainly on keys and it works on different files. Whereas each and every uh, uh, database has its own file. File means an actual, like a JSON file or something. Okay, and basically an object file 
where you have a file uh, that holds all your uh, what we call as collections instead of referring them as tables we'll have collections here as the name suggests collections means it's a collection of either objects or collection of um, you know collection of items by the way so it's a collection of objects generally speaking in all the nosql languages specifically in mongodb we are talking about javascript object files so in a nosql uh, database you are not going to store all the information in a single location okay so uh, all the data that you are uh, you know storing inside your uh, database management system are stored in multiple different locations and they are accessed in a uh, multiple different uh, manner like if you want to access a, uh, access a uh, database let's say you are accessing a database called as user now if two users are um, like a, let's say profile the database that you are trying to access is profile if you are trying to access the database profile if there are two users at different endpoints basically different clients if they are trying to access the same database it's going to create a load ban load balancing nightmare right so you don't want multiple people, multiple people logging onto the database single database so in a single file situation in a single file solution such as sql it's going to create a problem because you cannot lend out your single file to that many people so what you end up doing is that you 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 end up creating duplicates of the um, of, of the same file and giving out the data to all the other people now that creates a uh, that creates a buffer a buffer time period it might be low it might be like 3 seconds or 5 seconds but in a very large application that absolutely makes a difference right you don't want a 5 second delay between a person entering the data into the database and it is getting reflected on a client side you want it to be live you want it to be immediate so in that case you can use no sql the reason you can use no sql is that there are multiple different files and for each and every collection has its own object file so if a say if a person is working on a uh, collection 1 and if a person is working on a collection 2 the person working on collection 2 is not affecting in any manner the performance of the person who is uh, uh, accessing the collection 1 so there is no performance de degradation there is also no memory degradation uh, degradation as well because those are two different files and two different access points correct so that is one of the major advantages of sql so it is um, inherently faster um, and also inherently more efficient now that brings us along to mongodb so we have seen some examples of how mongodb works but in on its very basic level mongodb is basically a database that resides out of ibm um, and the way mongodb works is as same as any other nosql uh, database so what is a special thing about mongodb then mongodb works with javascript um, a lot better the reason being is that mongodb to save its collections okay to basically maintain the collections Ma mongodb uses json files or javascript object files okay so all the collections that you are creating in a mongodb or javascript objects so what are javascript objects then so javascript objects are basically array like items uh, with keys and value pairs like each and every uh, object is going to have something called as attributes each and attribute attribute is basically a data a data is going to have a key and it's going to have a value so using this what you can do is you can create multiple copies of a template like you might have a single template uh, template called as like might be related to a user that contains only id name email phone number address and address to address 3 but an another an another user doesn't require address to address 3 so you will simply discard that key that key will not exist in the other uh, other uh, user object so using this we can customize our object how our objects behave and we can also take advantage of uh, of the very powerful node.js and also various other javascript frameworks so you can think of uh, mongodb as a uh, application or, uh, or a database that is taking advantage of the javascript framework uh, environment okay now mongodb is inherently used in two different full stacks 
one is called as mean stack the other is called as mean stack mean stack means that uses mongo express react and node whereas mean stack means it uses mongo express angular and react okay in any of these cases the backend doesn't change the backend still says that you are the connecting connecting uh, framework is express and the node is your framework that allows the javascript framework basically that allows you to perform backend operations calculations and stuff and mongo is going to be your database okay by this what what you can do is it doesn't matter what type of the, uh, uh, javascript uh, framework that you have as long as you use node js it doesn't matter what your front end is so front end doesn't affect how your back end performs whereas in sql or mysql to be perfect the back end affects how your sorry the front end affects how you can present right because it is not compatible like sql is not compatible at all the front end because it is a table there is only so many ways that you can present the data in a particular form and you need to build your back end relative to the front end whereas in mongodb since everything is stored individually in their own object files each page can have its own structure and each uh, you know back end uh, program can has its own structure so and also mongodb can store various forms of data as well like rather than storing only data related to a particular data type or a particular data structure it can create its own structure and we can structure the mongodb more flexibly as well like we are not constrained by the table we can create a tree if we want to we can create a graph if we want to we can create a queue if we want to right so that is one of the major advantages of mongodb so those are our mongodb sql uh, comparisons now in comparison with the mongo uh, mongodb and an sql server um, mongodb as i said is faster but also mongodb is scalable as well see sql since it has a uh, it has a tabular format it is very hard to scale it because why the scaling is hard is because it's a table and there is only so many fields that you can have and at some point you are going to run out of fields or you are going to run out of tables but in mongodb it's not the case okay and also mongodb syntaxes are much easier to use it doesn't have like sql has more than 15 to 16 query all the different combinations if you count all the different combinations you have more than 16 queries in mongodb the queries are limited meaning that you don't have to worry about extracts and deletes and initialization it's a very standard process it's very standardized so that it is so the user can focus on other parts of the application not just focus on help bent on like you know trying to optimize the perfect um, uh, perfect um, uh, database okay then so as we talked about this is how mongodb is structured a mongodb is structured uh basically out of a database so in like likewise in sql it also has a database and unlike sql instead of having tables it's going to have collections okay you can imagine collections of there's a like table names for example if i have a database uh, related to um if i have a database related to uh, user sign ups or user management in a job portal now i have a database called as job portal inside the job portal i am going to have collections so the collections is going to be user collections and then resume collections so you can see where it is going right so in a user collection i can store all the information about the users right individually from their resumes whereas in an rdbms they have to be related like in some way or another you need to have a same primary key or something or you need to include a foreign key uh, in order to integrate the two things but whereas here it's not the case so you can have you can have something called as an id in your documents so in your so every collection have can have its own id or every document in a collection can have its own id and that id has to be just reflecting in the other collections 
right you don't have to set up an rdbms like you don't have to set up a relation that id will serve as our uh, connection points and since all the records that we are creating are its own document like they are created as their own like they act as their own files there is not going to be a situation where uh, if you are trying to access a data you have to access all the records you just don't have to access all the records you can access this particular record individually without affecting or without going through the hassle of considering other records like let's say you are uh, trying to extract a data of a user in sql right you need to use a var class but by using the var class you are uh, effectively uh, first processing the table which means you are creating a copy of the table then uh, processing then processing the var class then creating a new table but whereas here you can access the database first after accessing the database you can select the collection after selecting the collection you can directly access the document you don't have to go through all the all the documents create a new copy or something you just have creating a single copy so that is the major advantage here and so we have multiple clients for mongodb okay so mongodb has something called as mongoose so mongoose is basically windows or a desktop um, uh, you know terminal like like with how we have cmd in windows right so mongoose is basically a terminal that allows us to perform operations directly on mongodb okay so you can download mongoose terminal and by downloading mongoose terminal what you can do is you can uh, uh, like do the crud operation so we'll look at what are the crud operations and what are those and compass compass is basically you can uh, that is actual, actual uh, database management system compass is a database management system and also atlas is a database management system atlas is a cloud solution whereas compass is a local solution okay now uh, compass is a local solution local solution means it is called the compass application or the compass management system mongodb compass management system is going to be downloaded onto your uh, onto your computer and you need to download all the dependencies related to it once you depend uh, download all the dependencies uh, from mongodb.org after downloading all those things after installing all the uh, necessary applications related to compass you can create your own server now after creating your own server you are going to have uh, basically uh, what we call as a connection query now this is as same as any connection query you have in your uh, um you know um, in your uh, sql database so the two things that you are that you require is um you need to have your uh, local host uh, port name like uh, you might have local local host colon 3030 local host colon 8080 likewise for mongodb it's default to 27017 like mongodb 27017 or you can also use uh, 127.0.0.1 that is also a host your local host url so by you you need to have this local based local host url and then you need to have your database okay so you need to know what is your database and after getting all those things now you can simply uh, select the database or connect to the database that you want to by using the database name and the connection uh, connection url after creating the uh, connection you can uh, start operating on your uh, you know crud operations so the crud operations are as of follows so the first thing is create query so in mongodb um we can create a collection directly onto a uh, directly on a um you know compass or an atlas so after creating a collection on a compass or an atlas what you need to use is you need to use an insert query to insert the insert the uh, files now here you can see that first we have db dot users so that users will be your collection name so you are inserting values into the collection called as users okay so users your collection so as i said users can also have related you know data such as name age status status means whether their job application is pending or their are uh, the, those kind of things are might it might be related to their 
you know whether they have logged in or not whether they have we have sent some request what about that status then we can store email information and all those things now these are this entire block right this entire block of code is called as a document and this is where our keys and values are present so name is a key so is a value so this is if you have worked with uh, javascript data javascript object files before you know how this is how we create javascript objects right so we have name that is called as a key and then we have so that is called as a value so then we have a age a key then we have 26 a value then we have status a key and also pending called as a value so this is how you insert a in, you insert a new record or a new document into mongodb basically by using uh database dot basically uh, db will be your db name and your connection uh, connection url so that is a variable by the way so then you have your users variable means it depends upon the value of db depends upon your system and what type of connections you have whether you have a connection related to your atlas or related to your compass then you have users that is your collection name and then insert one now insert one is a query uh, that um, you know focuses on inserting only one value you can do multiple insertions as well so the query that we use to do uh, perform that is basically what we can do is insert many so i n s e r t then m a n y so m is going to be a capital letter so that is called as insert many okay so insert many and insert one in both the cases the values are the same sorry the uh, the process is the same so first you create first you connect to a uh, mongodb database after connecting you are selecting your uh, database using the database name then after that you are processing your connection now the query that we have here can be directly used in mongoose and it's not going to affect anything but for uh, node the uh, the query might be changing so for node we need to have a uh, we need to have a connection in order to do that so in node.js what we'll be doing is we'll be using an asynchronous programming okay we'll be using asynchronous programming now the uh, so it's going to look something like this just give me a second First, you need to have your um, const. First, you need to have const uh, Mongo client. So Mongo client means you are requiring MongoDB first. So using that MongoDB uh, client, what you are doing is that using that information, you are uh, adding the, uh, like you are basically including the module it's like include in php like you are including the module of mongodb mongodb is a module node module provided by uh, node.js right then what you need to do is you need to cre uh, create a connection between your database and your uh, and your uh, like uh, node.js connection or node.js client so what you need to do is you need to have two variables one will be called as database the other will be called as a client now the client um, will contain the uh, mongodb client url so using the uh, using mongodb client it's a class by the way using the class we are creating a new object okay so the parameter that you are passing is your connection url basically your local host url or your atlas url we are passing that uh, url to the um, passing that to the constructor and it will create a new uh, new object class object called as client after creating the class object now you can create your uh, asynchronous function maybe you can call it as uh, get data or something or you can call it as you know any name you want after creating that function inside the function you will have your you need to first create your collection first before start doing anything so using the create query you will be creating your collection after creating uh, so to do that what you need to do is you need to first process the connection so you do this by using the method called as 
connect in mongodb client we have a method called as connect okay so to process that we need to uh, what we need to do is we need to use the object name dot connect and that function will return some value okay a result basically whether the connection was success or failure or something after the connection is success um will process the uh, you know success uh, success later success failure rate later then what we need to do is we need to create our uh, collection right so that is used um, that is done using the uh, mongodb query called as db dot create collection whereas c is in capital letter then you need to specify your uh, like collection name then you will have a error function like basically whether uh, you know it is creating any error or not so after processing this you will uh, get your output so this is a basic create collection query in a node js implementation so this is how all the other um, queries are being performed so let us see what are those other queries so by the way guys um, the code is in the chat box if you want to verify the next thing is that finding a find operation so the find operation is um, is the same like we have db that specifies our db connective connection then like just like here right then we have users that is our collection name then we are finding so find is our uh, query so we are basically searching for something so that we have find here specifically what we are finding for like we have what we are searching for we are searching for age which is equal to 18 and then we are searching for name one and then address one okay and then we are limiting uh, the number of uh, search operations uh, to five so this is what we are doing so this is called as a find query so this is uh, as same as like a select query in sql so if you want to write this in an sql format you will be writing like select age select sorry select name comma address from users so that is the table name where a is equal to 18 so that is what your sql query would like so this is the equivalent mongodb query the next thing that you have is delete so specifically here we are uh, using delete mini okay so the delete mini means you are deleting uh, many uh, records or many documents okay whatever the uh, status that are being set to reject basically if your job application is rejected your status is rejected by the way so all those rejected profiles will now be deleted from the database okay and we are performing operations on more than one document so the we want to reject we want to mass reject basically we want to delete um, many, as many data as possible so that is why we are using delete many if we want to delete only one you can use delete one query so the delete one query will delete the first instance of it not the second instance not the tenth instance or something just the first instance will be deleted so this these are the mongodb uh, operations that we use right so in um, to in order to create and maintain data in mongodb but so the major applications of a mongodb these days so we here at unicaxa we uh, we are uh, training our students on mern stack so mern stack means we will use mongodb for database solution and then we are using react for the front end and node for you know connecting to the mongodb and extracting data performing back end operations for that we are using node js and then we are using express for connecting the um, you know node and uh, react so basically it's a uh, we are using it to connect right now so this is what we are um, teaching in monstack and as you can know from all the advantages that we have that i have talked about how the java mongodb works very well with javascript and all by using monstack what we can do is um, very technically um, if you want to speak very technically you have only one language or only one script you have multiple multiple frameworks or multiple libraries supporting these technologies so the uh, you know for a developer the development time is very low and for a user they don't have to you know install many dependencies or many uh, servers right because we have uh, node js servers up and ready so the client doesn't need any solution on their on their side everything will be computed when they when the output reaches them 
and also we ha- we can have single url within with by using react components with with a single url we can access everything so we can create a single page application dynamically so these are some of the major advantages of monstack and this is how mongodb shapes the monstack and this applies to mean stack as well but the major disadvantage with, with mean stack is that uh, angular is a, um, a pretty hard to crack because it combines javascript and uh, html so much together that that there will be no difference there but in react all the html code that you are writing will be in the return statement of a function or a method so that there is a clear differentiation between what is javascript what is html what will be my presentation stuff what will be my pers- persistence layer stuff so that is one of the major reasons why mongodb is very important and one of the most uh, you know um, currently up- upcoming uh, languages so that is it i mean that is all that i have to you know discuss about mongodb today thank you everyone so hello everyone i guess you liked the session okay and uh, thank you so much for attending this session so let me again introduce you a little bit more about unikaksha okay so i guess uh, everyone know that like unikaksha is an online educational platform which provide different different programs okay so as karan also told ki uh, that uh, like we, we provide a full stack development program which is your mon stack in which you are also going to learn mongodb in advanced form okay so uh, we are providing this program in different different you know prize models like pay after placement synergy autonomy and many more okay so any one of you uh, like have any sort of questions want to ask anything or i can say want to have a one on one free counseling session okay so i am just launching a uh, like you know a poll in which uh, it says like are you interested so if you are interested to have a one on one free counseling session just fill yes okay if you don't want it just fill no okay want everyone to answer this question okay only four peoples no only six peoples have answered it i want everyone to answer this okay because it's really good for yourself only whatever you do like you are in college right now or you are in you know uh, like you are a fresher or you are a working professional so it's good for you to know like more about like what you should do in your future what you should do right now what good opportunities are waiting for you i guess you are not aware about that but the counselors what we have knows really about the industry right now they know what exactly is going on in the industry and they will going to guide you about your future okay so giving just 5 more seconds for this poll wants everyone to answer this okay this is going to help you only okay we are not going to charge you anything it's just completely free okay so whenever a call will going to come to you just you know uh, like question everything whatever you have in your mind okay so let's end this poll okay i guess everyone have answered this perfect so guys uh if you have still have any sort of questions with the mentor about this session you can just write down on the q and a session okay or in the chat section now you can use any of this or you can just you know raise your hand okay we will listen to you or we will uh, you know uh resolve all your all your questions whatever you have if you want to ask me anything you can ask me also so we have a team of you know counseling session we have a team of mentors who will gonna guide you for your future okay like i guess uh, one of the student i forgot the name like who is a working professional also right so for those people also we have different different you know programs for that like job ready program in which we specifically going to train you for the jobs only okay i guess no one have any sort of questions guys just waiting for one more minute so if you have any any kind of questions anything you want to ask just go ahead and ask the question okay
there are two things uh, everyone let me tell you okay if you have no questions it only implies two things which means one is like you know everything okay and second is like you know you don't know anything and you are just hesitating to ask questions or i can say you are just disrespecting the mentor okay ask asking questions is you know just going to improve your knowledge you have seen a little kid in your life like anyone any little kid he is asking many questions like what is this what is that and if the questions is being resolved he he just you know you know you know gonna know something new his intelligence is going to improve his iq is going to improve so ask the questions whatever it is it if it is silly also just ask it so i guess no one have any questions so guys should we end this session should we end this guru class just write yes if you uh, want to end this guru class you can use the chat section Okay, Tawhid Khan. Thank you so much for acknowledging. Okay, Ganesh. Okay, Brian. Okay, so guys, let's uh, let's then uh, end this session. Okay, so again, I'm telling you, every Saturday we are conducting free live free live guru classes. Okay, so what you can do, you just follow us on LinkedIn or follow us on Instagram or subscribe us on uh, like. youtube okay so over there you're going to find information about the next guru class okay and on every sunday also uh, we perform a live webinar also like which is on tomorrow okay so you can just you know go to our website uh, let me you know just write down the link on the website so here is the link of the website you can just go over there and you can just go to the event section over there okay so you're going to find the link for the tomorrow's webinar okay which is going to be taken by mr ravindra singh who is the senior counselor okay and you can just you know uh, he's also in the learning and development field okay so you can ask any questions over there if you have so you just you know register yourself over the for the tomorrow's webinar or still like we will going to contact you like uh, to the details that you have given to us so we will surely going to you know uh, cure any kind of questions that you have so guys let's end this session uh, bye bye and uh, let's meet in the next guru class okay thank you so much guys